I don't know if this is uh, progress or what, but I got, I got this guy into my hands. I was holding him before in my hands. So I opened the cage, he was right there. And then he climbed on my arm, so I thought that was cool. And then he decided to run up my head. <laughs> I guess he does like the highest place in the, in the building. That seems to be my head right now, so. <laughs> I, I guess I can say we're making progress here with my albino water monitor. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And thank God Pablo's coming back on Monday because it's been a busy week here at the facility. And yes, I cleaned. Yes, I played with snakes. Yes, I trained water monitors. Yes, I fed turtles. Yes, I sprayed down the green tree pythons. Yes, I made sure that the scaleless ball pythons paper towels were wet. All my checklists were checked off. And yes, I did film some stuff for you guys. So I don't even remember what I filmed because it was over the last two days or actually a day and a half. So for my own sake, let's go into the facility and see what I filmed. I had to show you guys this lock. I love this lock. This male, he's small. I mean, he, he's like, I gotta get the job done. I'm not gonna like straddle her whole body. I'm just gonna wrap my whole lower body around her tail area and get her right there. Look at that. She's a big girl. <laughs> He's not so big. He figured it out. He didn't figure it out last year, but he figured it out this year. He's like, you know what? Didn't work last year. I'm not missing anything. And he got it right in there. That's a good lock. That might be the, I think we should brandish this the lock of the year. It's like the MVP of the year. This is the lock, the male ball python lock of the year, right there. Dave Kaufman, add that to your awards that you give out. All right, we're just changing some water bowls in the outdoor enclosures. I got my male Bradley python, enjoying the sun, enjoying the nice cool breeze here. It is kind of cool here in Cape Coral. I got my female up there. She's been, she hangs up here a lot. I don't see her out too much. She likes it up here by the little hide box. This guy likes to climb around a little bit more. And let's change that water bowl and make sure we got some clean water for these guys. And then we'll take a look next at our olive pythons. All right, the olive pythons. This is my uh, smaller pair. They're chilling. Unfortunately, my female keeps rubbing her nose against that metal grating. You can see her doing it. I don't know why she's doing it, but I've been putting bass tracing on there. I gave her some antibiotic shots. This one seems to be rubbing his body on there too. I've been giving him some, some shots too, just to play it safe, but they're loving it. It's, it's, it's uh, probably 70 degrees out, which for most snakes would be very cool. They're, they're, they're loving it out here. <laughs> they're, they're climbing, they're being active. Amazing, right? I just wish they would stop rubbing themselves against the, the metal. And this metal is has got a coating on it too, so it's not even really sharp. But she wants to keep rubbing and try to get out. All right, here's my other pair of olives. These are my original pair. My big girl, my big boy. And I don't think they're locked or anything, but they're definitely close. Tails are very close to each other. They're hanging out on top of each other. Well, like I said, I don't think they're locked yet, but now that I opened the tub up there, or the cage, I should say, and they're not a tub anymore. They're in an actual cage. They um, are a little more, moving around a little bit more here. They just closed the shed though. Recently, you can see how beautiful they're looking. It's funny, these are in really good shape. The other two are like beating each other, beaten, all beaten up looking. I don't know if it's because they're just rubbing too much against the cage and these guys are not. These guys are actually in direct sunlight. The other ones are kind of a little more indirect. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but I'm loving the way they're looking. It's raining real hard now in Cape Coral here. It just started raining. I came back out here. I wanted to check out the olive pipe hunts. And these guys are like chilling out under the uh, under the hide there. They don't want to get wet. These guys are loving it. They're loving the water. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, that female keeps rubbing her her mouth against the against the uh, wire there. It keeps irritating. I keep putting bacitracin on there to lubricate it a little bit. I'll just keep doing that every day. But they're loving the water. They love the rain. Who would have thought? I, I, I love to see snakes in their natural habitat. It's amazing to watch the behaviors. That's a really nice pair, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing. They're not locked, but I saw them locked a little earlier. <laughs> He's going away. He doesn't want to be filmed. GHI Mojave, 100% het pied female. I love GHI Mojave. Het pied even better. Bred to a banana, enchi orange dream, yellow belly pied, head hypo. Wow. That'll be fun if we hit that. I don't think I've gotten GHI into my pied projects. This would be the first time, so let's say a prayer and hope this uh, female goes. She's she didn't go last year. I did see breeding action, so hopefully, maybe she'll go this year. I'm d repeating the pairing, so and he's a proven breeder for me, so I know he can get the job done. All right, this is a, a potentially promising site. I'm not sure if they're locked or not. It looks like they potentially could be. This is my sharp albino fire female. And that is a fire head sharp male. I've had them together. <laughs> I've been cohabitating these guys for, for almost two and a half years now. And I've got nothing, no babies. I've never seen a lock from them. They're definitely old enough. The only variable that I changed is I put these boas, along with my other fire diamonds, into the cold room. We're in room one here. I have all my uh, Australian stuff. And I said I was going to try it. It seems like I, I'm seeing breeding action, so I guess that's a good sign. Whether we see any uh, any baby spruce is another question altogether. But so far, so good. I don't know if this is uh, progress or what, but I got, I got this guy into my hands. I was holding him before my hands. So I opened the cage, he was right there. And then he climbed on my arm, so I thought that was cool. And then he decided to run up my head. <laughs> I guess he does like the highest place in the, in the building. That seems to be my head right now, so. <laughs> I, I guess I could say we're making progress here with my albino water monitor. He, uh, he's very comfortable with my head. Hopefully he doesn't poop on me. I already feel like he has pooped on me somewhere, but I don't know. I feel like there's, I'm wet someplace. I don't know if it's, I just got splashed or... <laughs> but he, I guess I don't want to ruin his, uh, his newfound confidence in my head. So I'm just going to let him sit there for a little while. <laughs> oh, we love our animals, don't we? Look at this boy. He's tongue flicking, so he's got to be happy up there. I'll probably have some little holes in my head here after a while. Let me see if I can get it to go into my hand, transfer onto my hand here. He doesn't like my hand as much as he likes my head. Come on, come on, big boy. The trick is you don't. I don't want to get him upset where he's going to grip into my head and he's going to leave. Uh, not that I care, but I don't need any uh, holes in my head. Being good up there, I will say that. <laughs> it's amazing how this, <laughs> how he's really come around. I had the other one out too, because she was by the glass. I picked her up, but she got a little nervous once I was holding her. I think I picked her up too fast. It seems like they take a little bit of time to calm down when you first open, when you first kind of encounter them, even if they're like they know you. He calmed down though, definitely for sure. When I first opened it, he was definitely not happy though. But I, I let him get on my hand. I picked him up. I, I kept him in his cage on my hand until he was ready to come out. Now he seems like he's ready to come out, so he's letting me rub him, which is good. I will say this about the water monitors, and I don't want to jinx myself, but neither one of them has taken a bite at me or anything like that. They, they might have whipped me with their tail, or they might not be, you know, they might puff their throat up. But no one is, not a single one of them has bitten. 
which is good. No one wants to get bitten by a, a water monitor. And I put my hand right in front of his mouth and I'm rubbing his under his chin and he's licking me, but yeah, he hasn't, he's gotten nervous, but he has not by any means tried to bite me or anything like that. Maybe I should try to like lower my head by his cage. So I do have some work to do. <laughs> as fun as this might be for him. And I'm glad that we're making progress here. I really don't want him on my head all day. All right, let's see if we can get him down. All right, I thought this, I'd just show you a, a pied female. And I wanted to show you how unsuspecting some snakes are. This female we produced back in 21. She's a year old. She's not only a pied, but she's also had hypo and had ultra male. So she's pied head ultra glow pied, you know, or head ultra glow, which is pretty awesome. And you you know that I've produced ultra glow pieds and they're just spectacular. And I, you know, in that same litter that I produced that ultra glow pied, I produced these two females and they're both just pied in their head ultra male head hypo. And I've been just rowing them up, you know, they're on small rats now, possibly, probably by next year, they'll be breeding. Pretty cool, right? A lot of, you got, look, you got to buy potential in your, in your collections. And if you don't buy potential, you'll never have it. You're not, very few people can afford to buy a visual, you know, three recessive gene animal. And if you want to get into projects like that, buy heads, buy something like this, you know, this is the way to get in. You just have to be patient. I'm very patient, you know. I, a lot of the best stuff that I produced was just from being patient, buying hets and double hets and just playing the odds, rolling the dice, as they say in Vegas, right? You got to be in it to win it. Here's a really cool male that I produced last year. He is a hurricane dinker project. So it's one of my crazy dinker looking animals that I bred to a hurricane. And I produced another hurricane, but it doesn't look like a regular hurricane. It looks like something else. So I don't know what the gene is, haven't proven it out yet, but it definitely looks unusual because this does not look like your typical hurricane. And I and I, I could tell it's hurricane, but it's like a unraveled hurricane with a lot of highlighting and light lightning in there. So we're gonna this is a male, luckily, we're gonna try to breed him to something, maybe even hurricane. See if we can breed him out. Or maybe we'll try to breed him back to his mama. Actually, the mom is not a is not the dinker, it was the father, so can't even do that. So we're gonna have to breed this to something else, possibly a hurricane animal, and see what we produce. As I'm cleaning, this one's the next in line, so I might as well show him off. Or just show this girl off. Pastel blade, hurricane clown. So we got once again, I always told you hurricane looks makes clown stuff look way better this, this is banana hurricane pastel clown so banana and hurricane work really well together banana and clown work really together and banana and hurricane work really well together so of course when you combine them all you're going to get something spectacular and this girl is almost a year old now so she is a year old actually yep she just she's actually older than the other right now she was born in november of 21 and she's got some nice eyes in her and she's growing really nicely. I don't have a lot of female banana clowns. I might not have any, this might be my only one and this one has hurricane in it, so it's even better. And here's the brother, same morph. Banana, blade, I forgot about blade. <laughs> There's blade in there too, because the, the, the mother was super blade. Banana Blade Hurricane Clown. I think the other one had pastel. I don't think this, this guy doesn't have pastel on it. What would I get? How cool would it be to breed this guy with his sister? Try to produce Super Banana, Super Blade, Super Hurricane Clowns. Now that's a lot of genes and a lot of supers. And that's gotta look pretty super great, don't you think? We'll see. All right, we'll wrap up today's little hodgepodge of uh, videos with my scale, my first scaleless animal I ever produced, or first scaleless bull python. I produced a bunch of years ago, and she's going to breed for me hopefully this year. She's eating real well. She's put on some really nice size. 
uh, you know, very rarely did anyone show you an adult scaleless animal. They look exactly the same as they did when they were born, essentially. She's going to shed. They sh I told you, these, these guys shed like once a week. So you got to keep, I keep them on paper towels. I keep them on moist paper towels. And I usually just keep the area where they kind of lay on the hot spot a little dry or that dries out quicker anyway. And they do well, really well. So, like I said, I wouldn't have 30 scaleless animals in my collection, but... I definitely like to have about five or six of them. I think they're, they're really, really cool. People love to come when they come over. My kids I like to just feel how smooth they are. It just really, I mean, this is a, just a blade scaleless animal and it's really, really high definition. It just looks really cool. And, you know, like I said, I just, I like having different looking things and it does have some scales on it. It has like random scales on its body. Just like, like one, or, one or two here and there, but very cool. Nah, I thought I'd throw a little boa action in. I felt like I was uh, not giving him the love. This is what I believe to be a super hypo. It's possible super hypo. It looks hype super hypo to me. Possible super hypo paradigm, which is one copy sharp albino, one copy boa woman caramel. Uh, they sit together on the same allele, and we produce this paradigm in between creamy looking albino. And once again, the hypo really cleans it up. And then this is also Het RDR, Black Eyed Annery. So that's Ralph Davis Reptile line, Black Eyed Annery. It's Het for that. The uh, visual will have a black eye and we'll have the removal of all reds and yellows. So it's a great gene. Um, a lot of the brothers and sisters of this, of this little girl actually are visual Black Eyed Anneries. And you've seen those before. Those little bow tie saddles. How cute is this girl? She is gorgeous. She's going to be available. I haven't put any of these, this whole litter, I've kept back so far. I haven't sold any of them. And uh, probably because I like them so much. <laughs> I have to let them go. <laughs> so, really nice. All right, I couldn't resist. This female is so gorgeous. I had to just show her to you. So, this is possible super hypo phantom. So, it's super hypo paradigm just like the other one except this is the actual visual black eyed anery we call that a phantom so it's like a moon glow only using the paradigm instead of like an albino and using the black eyed anery instead of just a regular anery this snake will never get yellow it will always stay looking like this ghost like phantom like if you will <laughs> with those jet black eyes from the black eyed anery gene i mean it's breathtaking, this, this snake. This this girl, is. imagine her when she gets really big and gets like five feet, six feet. She's just going to be like wacky looking. That's the power of black-eyed anery. In boas, I have a lot of heads. I have snakes that are two years old already that uh, I have for sale in Morph Market. Some that aren't listed. If you guys want to get into that project and produce your own phantoms and, and blizzards, let me know. Yeah, I got to just show you the blizzard. We went through all the other ones. So this is the super hypo sharp albino. So it's not paradigm. It's actually a visual sharp albino, two copies. And it's also black eyed anery. So it has all the genes and it is snow crystal white. Red eyes because it's albino. It has no pattern because it's super hypo. And it's basically a black eyed anery moon glow is what it is. But it will never get yellow because the black eyed anery gene removes yellow as well as red. And that's why it's so powerful. To be honest with you, the, the regular anery gene really doesn't, you know, it's great and everything like that. It does some cool stuff, but compared to black eyed anery, I wish all my stuff was black eyed anery. I had. I'm trying to shift to all black eyed anery stuff. I'm telling you, if you guys are not in that project, you got to get into it. All right, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully you got a great weekend planned for you. Hope you're gonna have some fun this weekend. I am covering the Mr. Olympia competition from my house, from the live stream. Uh, if you guys are bodybuilding or fitness fans, you can go to RX Muscles YouTube channel, check out all our coverage of the uh, Olympia weekend, which is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding and fitness. Look who we got here, Jedi the cat. 
has decided to visit the snake room. She never, he never comes in there. All right, I uh, hope you like my, uh, my water, albino water monitor training today. Pretty cool, right? I got that mail, I climbed on top of my head. We're making progress. You know, it's, it's about persistence, and I say this all the time. It's like, same thing with, with changing how you look. If you wanna lose body fat, lose weight, if you wanna put muscle on, all you have to do is apply the same techniques over and over and over again and be very persistent and don't quit. Same thing with snake breeding, reptile breeding. Don't quit, you'll succeed. Training of water monitors, don't quit. I learned the technique from Kevin McCurley, Sean O'Rourke, my friend. They told me what to do and I just kept repeating it every day. Even when it, it seemed like it wasn't working, I just repeated it and repeated it and repeated it. And it, sure enough, I'm making progress now. At least with one of them. The other one, it's, you know, I've been, I've been touching him and petting him, petting her, I don't know, her, him, whatever. I think I'm gonna get both of them because I am a tenacious, persistent, crazy person. <laughs> that's what you gotta be. You wanna be successful at anything in life, that's what you gotta do. And those are my words of wisdom, taking you guys into the weekend. If you're enjoying what you're saying, please hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back Monday morning.